Question. In 23 official James Bond films over 50 years, how many times do you think you've seen James Bond's actual home? Answer, two. And the last time was in 1973. This is a little odd when you consider that you get to see the homes of all the main characters in all the other top movie franchises. If we can picture Frodo Baggins, Luke Skywalker and Harry Potter's homes, why not James Bond? The answer, thankfully, can be explained best using the medium of fridges. Everything we see in the screen is what the creator wants us to see. Everything. So when we see inside a character's home, it's because someone needs us to see that home so we understand something better. Pictures often communicate more clearly than words, so creators will show you something rather than tell you something. So, for example, we know Harry Potter has a rough time at home, not because he says, gosh, I'm having a rough time, but because he lives under the stairs. It doesn't even have to be the whole house. In films, if we see the guy entering an apartment, going to the fridge and finding his last remaining beer, we know instantly he's a loner, possibly a detective, possibly with issues. If the fridge is well stocked, it's more likely a contented home. If the fridge is only beer, it's a frat house. If the fridge is a doorway to a system of underground missile silos, it's possibly the baddie. Basically, once the character of the fridge has been established in a movie, the movie should pretty much write itself. So, clearly, James Bond should have the world's greatest fridge, right? Well, no, because if you're a proper hero, you don't actually have a fridge, or a home, and ideally, you only have one set of clothes. Sound familiar? While there are, in modern fiction, heroes who are essentially ordinary people who deal with extraordinary circumstances, real heroes, the ones from epic tales, the ones that can be relied upon to save the day every time, tend to be a little cartoony and two-dimensional. They tend to represent something rather than be someone. Therefore, if you're aiming at being an epic hero, being a bit two-dimensional is essential. The less detail you include, the less baggage associated with you, and the less people will feel excluded. True epic heroes don't have fridges or homes because they aren't real people at all. James Bond has a few few traits, sure, but he doesn't have complexity. He is essentially just a faceless man with a gun and a suit. In the same way that Clint Eastwood's man with no name is just a man with a gun and a blanket. My desire to find and worship these cartoon heroes is a strong one, and as a society we do it every day with celebrities. It's been the same throughout history, from Achilles to One Direction, we seem to need to channel hopes and fears through people whose two-dimensional qualities make them easy to pedestalise. If they don't have proper human complexity, they can be treated as gods and monsters as we require. So, if one of the reasons you like James Bond is his simplified, unrealistic character, you might also enjoy Hello, OK, and possibly The Bible. But reading these titles won't necessarily help you become a Hollywood hero like James Bond. If you want to do that, all you really need to do is follow this simple checklist and you too can save the world like James Bond. No fridge? Check. No home? Check. Spending more money than you could possibly earn? Check. High alcohol consumption? Check. Always the same clothes.